Hi everybody, I have a major update to announce for datatier.net. Datatier.net is an entity framework alternative that makes it simple to create all store procedure powered data tiers. And I've, after putting this off all last year, I finally got around to doing it a couple of days ago. I have it now to the project templates, now only use two projects instead of four. So I'll just show you this image here real quick. So now it's just the object library and the data access component. And here in a second, I'll show you the old way. And what we're going to be building in today's video is the data tier for this project. And this is a project called uh, PickGuessr. And what PickGuessr does is it randomly fills in pixels. And the idea was I was just doing a prototype to see if I built a website. And the first one to guess what it is where every right now I'm doing it kind of fast but you could have it on the website where it does only a certain number of pixels every minute and the first one to guess whether they win lunch or a gift card or something I don't know but it just might be something people at work supposed to be working and come look at it now this is a this is a small image so it drew really fast but for larger images it takes longer and, but what we're doing is we're saving an image, a pixel by pixel in the database, which is the absolute worst way to do it. The second worst way would be to save the image as a blob, and the preferred way to be would just save the path, which I'm also saving the path, but I'm just filling in. This was just a, I just wanted to see. This is also using uh, pixeldatabase.net, one of my open source graphics projects, so it made this really simple. So there, and by now it's just, they're just done. So it just draws in the image. So that's what we're going to be rebuilding. If you want to stick around, I'm going to show you how to install datatier.net. You will need SQL Server or SQL Server Express. And I'm going to go ahead and delete my environment variable because I think I already have it. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to show you how you set up datatier.net. So clicking on get up here. If you click on datatier.net and click on releases, I have a new release I made yesterday. So that we're testing it out in this video. That's the whole purpose. Click on datatier.net.msi. And I'm going to save this to my temp folder. And now I'm going to click on open file. Okay, that will install two shortcuts on your desktop. Let me minimize this project. And SQL Server. And this. Okay, so we'll put Connection Builder, which is probably worth the price, you'll think, by itself. And this is datatier.net. So we're going to uh, follow the instructions here on the setup screen. It says create a new database in SQL Server Management Studio named datatier.net.database. So let's do that now. So we'll come over here. Oops, new database. datatier.net.database. Now I have to type in two because I already have a dot database, but you don't have to add the two obviously. And then now we're going to come over here and it says, check this box. Now it says, click here. Now this is going to bring up SQL Server Management Studio. And once again, I need to type in two, but you don't have to do the two. And just hit execute. And that will install all the tables and the store procedures that were used to run datatier.net. As a geeky fact, datatier.net is used to build datatier.net. Although, it's kind of the chicken or the egg, although the, I know that the chicken came first in this case because I built it. I don't know about the real chicken. All right, so we now have datatier.net set up. And if you come back to the instructions, you can now skip step two and click on build connection stream. So I'm going to type in my server name. I'm going to click on Windows Authentication, and I'm going to type in two because I have already have a dev database. Build connection stream, test, install. And that will install the environment variable for datatier.net. And now you're going to get a message that it had to close. So if you restart it, 
If you get to here, you have datatier.setup. So in five minutes, we set up datatier.net on your computer, and now you're ready to create your own projects, which is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to delete our existing data tier for this project. So let me come over here to PitGuessr, Data, and I'm going to delete that right there. Okay. And now we're going to come over here and click on New Project. Project name is going to be PitGuessr. Project folder, oops, that was the wrong. We need to get the project folder, which is right here. Copy. And now notice it says Project Templates Version 2. If you click on Help, it will even show you that it's the 2 project version. If I were to uncheck this, the Help shows you the old way, which is the 4 project version. But I'm going to go back. All new projects should use the version 2 templates. And I'm going to click on Create Data Tier in Project Folder. Okay, it worked the first time. If that ever doesn't work, you might have to do that two or three times. And for some reason, it I think it's just uh, the program is faster than NuGet. But anyway, so it worked this time. That's good. All right, click on Add. Now I'm going to add a database. Type in my server name again. I'm going to click on this ellipsis. I'm using Windows Authentication, so this will update my database list. And I'm going to choose PickGuessr. And hit Save. And hit Save again. Now I could just build my project, but I'm just going to show you. If this was a large project and you had any tables or fields you want to exclude, you can uncheck them here. But I'm going to just use everything and click Build All. And once it finishes, it's going to prompt me to browse for the data tier. Now this just happened to open to the right project, but you'll have to open to your project folder. And I'm going to just click on this, and this will choose the two projects. And this, this also works for the old way, too. But we're going to click on Update Project. And now we're going to click on StoreProcedures.sql. And we're going to execute the store procedures that were just code generated. Okay. Now there's one more thing we need to do, and that is we need to create an environment variable for our project. I already had it, but I'm going to just show you how to do this because you're going to need this. So let me go to pick guesser connection string. Just pretend I'm clicking on new and type in pick guesser connection string. And to create the connection string, I will just come over here and say rocket. This is my server name again. Windows Authentication, Build Connection String, Test and Copy. Okay, so now over here, I've already got this, but you would just type in New and type, click in Pick Guesser Connection String and paste in your uh, connection string. I'm going to copy the name of this environment variable to my clipboard because we're going to need it, and I'll show you where. So now we're back here in our project. In the data folder, the data access. And by the way, this is a solution folder. I excluded the data folder from the project and click on Add New Solution Folder, and added these two projects. I could, uh, I could do it again if you want to see it. Uh, it's not real hard to do, but so it's just. But what we're going to do is just. You need to. Let me see if I have this already. Nope. See where it says change to your system environment variable? I'm going to paste in my environment variable name. And now my connection string is all wired up. And I'll show you how I create an instance of the gateway. So let me close this. But there's one more thing we need to do. We're going to have to create one custom. See the way we create the gateway? We just say gateway equals new gateway. And you pass in connection.name. And then your connection string is all wired up. 
All right, and now here's how you save a record. I'll just show you briefly. Here's how you, this is creating a pixel and I'm just saving uh, the pixel right here, gateway.savePixel. So it's not rocket science. All right. So now the only thing we need to do is create one custom store procedure because there's, if I tried to build right now, you're going to get a message. I'll just show you gateway.load uh, here. Load pixels for image ID doesn't exist. So we're going to go create that. So this is how you create a custom store procedure. Open project, pick guesser, manage data, Click on pixel, create new method, load by single field. The field is going to be image ID and notice all these values are filled in. So I'm just going to accept the defaults, click on confirm update and now next. And now you can either copy this store procedure and then go to SQL Server and do this yourself, or you can just insert your store procedure. I already have it, but it doesn't if exists, and if it does, it drops it. So there I inserted the store procedure. And now I'll show you if we go back to our project, and you'll see that now this method does exist load pixels for image ID. Okay. So now I'm just going to go to my uh, Invoke AI and create some image. We'll just see, how about, uh, oh, I don't know, cartoon, lobster, playing, guitar, and harp at the same time. We'll see what this looks like. I have no idea. But I figure a lobster has so many hands, they might can do this. So all we're going to do now is just save an image and randomly redraw it. And that'll be the end of the video. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is to build a data tier. That was actually uh, pretty good. I guess that's a lobster. Uh, not really sure what a cartoon lobster would look like, but that's uh, pretty much what I asked for, a harp and a lobster. So we'll just save this. It's going to create two more. So we'll just wait and see what the other two looks like. Nah, definitely this one's better so far. And we got one more coming, and then I'll just pick the best of the three. But so far, this one's winning. Okay, we're going to go with this one. That looks like a guitar and a harp in one instrument, which is kind of what I said, but I still think that one's better. So that's more, that's closer to what I meant. All right, so we'll just save this and I'll just call this lobster. All right, and now I'll show you how, here's the code though for the save button. All it does is, I create a pixel database, which is the path is just the, I'll show you how we, the image browser. And then here I just save the image. And if the image saves, then I iterate the X and the Y of the pixel database, which is just every pixel in the image and save it. And then at the end we say finish. So that's all it is. So it's a real simple project, but I will browse for my image and click save. And this is a real exciting video watching a progress bar. I used to like progress bars though because when I was young, my first programming job, they would fly me out of town. I'd have these like projects written and I would get paid to watch a progress bar go across the screen. So I've always liked progress bars because at least it, then it used to mean I was making money watching a computer do all the work. So it was always fun. Only problem with open source is it doesn't pay too much. Other than that though, it's fun. GitHub doesn't charge me or NuGet doesn't charge me for 
keep it on my coat on there. If they did, I would stop tomorrow. All right, so we're almost halfway done. Still not too bad, though, for saving a million pixels. Because I remember back in the old days, back when I was talking about when I used to travel, I remember it would save about 25,000 records a minute, which now I don't know what this is saving a minute, but I'm guessing it's closer to 100,000 or more. Computers have gotten much faster. But I'll put this project on GitHub. I just wanted to make a video for datatier.net now that it's .NET version 8 and now that I got the project structure down to two projects. And I was going to try to see if I could get it down to one, leave the object library separate and put all the DAC stuff somewhere else, but I'll probably just leave it where I have it now. I was happy I was able to do it in one day then, well, it took me two counting the debugging, but in the documentation changes. Okay, so we've almost saved our image pixel by pixel. I'm going to delete this project though because I'm sure I'm saving huge amounts of data. Okay, so this should be done in about 10 more seconds. Okay, and now I'm going to draw the image, and that'll be the end of this video. So I don't know if it would be an interesting website or not, if people could guess. Uh, what the image is. Because you can almost tell right about now. I don't know if anybody would guess lobster though, because I'm used to seeing, I guess it's a lobster, but I was thinking bigger claws. At least at this point, you can tell it's a harp and a guitar. Looks like he has two tails, I just noticed. All right, starting to fill in.
Once it gets close to the end, though, it just finishes real quick because there's less pixels to select from. Just about done. About two more seconds. Yep, done. Okay. Well, that was my video. Let me know what you think of datachair.net. I think it's worth the price. How about you?